Hey there folks and welcome back for another video. I'm Chris from iLeather.com and today we're going to take for a test run today the above the tie, I think it's called G1 if I'm not mistaken, something along those lines. This is a uh, gem style razor that uses the uh, gem style blade which you see loaded here. Uh, you can go look at my uh, video from yesterday where I actually take this apart. You don't have to completely disassemble it to put the blade in. You can uh, loosen this at the bottom and take the top cap off and slide the blade in and put the top cap back on. But yesterday I took it apart just to show you folks. Also going to be using uh, Ariana and Evans, uh, Peter Tricalis' company, Monte Carlo. And this is a beautiful scent strength, I'd call it six, just a little above medium. Best way I can describe this is it smells like a nice cologne. Um, I can't really tell you what the notes are. It just comes together beautifully. So let's wet the face and get right into it. Stay tuned. All right, and here we go with our Ariana and Evans soap, which smells absolutely superb. I got it in a set. I uh, bought it with the uh, aftershave, so we'll be using that as well today. And uh, no problems lathering, I can tell you that. Using the uh, Edwin Jagger synthetic brush, by the way. And this feels very nice. Let's add a little bit of water here. Let's smooth this out a little bit. I don't know who makes this soap, but it's good. No problems lathering. That's for sure. Let's take that off there a little bit. Certainly not a hard soap or difficult soap to lather, I should say. Not bad. Oh, all right. Good enough. We won't spend a ton of time making lather today because we're anxious to uh, see how this Bubbita G1, I believe it is. Um, also, yesterday in the video, I made a mistake. It's not 185, it's 199 is the price. So, correction there. And uh, one of the things Stan told me was. It needs to be held flatter to your face, a little flatter than your standard DE. Now, he is going to tweak that so you don't have to hold it as flat. That's doing a good job, I must say. That was pretty good. Not bad at all. I will have to experiment a little bit with the angle to see where the sweet spot is. But uh, that feels pretty good thus far. Usually with a uh, double-edged razor, you're in the habit of, you know, holding your normal angle. And this one, uh, as it is now, requires a little bit more um, finding that angle. Now, what he said he's going to do is alter it a little bit where the blade really won't touch until you get it to the right angle, and that will help. Um, that's roughly what he said he was going to do. He's also going to, also going to modify it so the... The hook that's inside it can only fit the right way. Uh, and again, go back and watch the video from yesterday if you want to see the little hook that I'm talking about. But it is not a bad shaver, that I can tell you. But it's actually four pieces, so it's unique in that regard. Uh, it feels good. The weight is good. And uh, it is shaving well. I have a brand new blade in here. Not bad at all. All right, so the first pass with this was uh, successful. Not a bad little shaver. Let me rinse the face. We'll come back and do pass two. All right, here we go, pass two. The soap was quite good during that first pass, and I had no problems whatsoever with this uh, new, modern, gym style single-edge razor. It is available for pre-sale now, about to tie again, $1.99. Um, I don't know whether I will purchase it uh, yet or not. I have not ordered it. As of yet, I'll see how this shave goes, and I'll probably use it another time or two before I decide. Um, I have the uh, the uh, one blade razor, which I can use these um, gym style blades in when I remove the spine. Now that's the older model. Model, excuse me, the newer model. I'm told they've modified it, and you can't do that. So I don't really know if I need another um, blazer that razor, excuse me, that uses gym style blades. It's sort of up in the air for me. And I'm pretty happy with the hardware I have now. And I actually have above the tie aluminum artist club style razor um, on the way. 
So, um, I don't know whether I will purchase this myself or not. Um, I'll send this one, of course, back uh, to Stan. It's a prototype. So again, what you're seeing is not the finished product. He's going to tweak it to improve it a little bit before you get yours if you have uh, pre-ordered it. So you can look for those uh, changes that I just mentioned, which should help the razor. And let's see how we do with Pass 2. Residual slickness is excellent on this soap. So the Ariana and Evans, whoever makes it, is uh, doing a nice job with their soap making. That I can tell you. It smells fantastic. So great job, Peter, on the scent, I must say. All right. I made a video yesterday where I was talking about... Um, I was talking about um, burnout... And uh, I said during this, during that video that the reason I'm not experiencing burnouts because I've done a really excellent job of uh, keeping things moving. And I have. But yesterday, as soon as I made that video, I reverted back to some of my old ways, which was a mistake, to be quite frank. And again, I'll tell you when I make a mistake. Because I had uh, made a video the other day, a sofa session, about... Um, and the Big Shave West was part of it. It wasn't meant to kill the Big Shave West, and it wasn't meant to be offensive to anybody. But I talked to several artisans, and one, in fact, emailed me last night and said, thank you for mentioning these things. Um, and I had talked to a few others, some who went, some who did not. And they expressed their concerns, and I agreed with them, so I gave my opinion, and then... Douglas Smythe, who put in a tremendous amount of work, admittedly, admittedly for this event, you know, he took it as a as a shot against him, and he made a live video, and so then I made my own live video in response. That was a mistake, and the reason I say that is, well, it ended up it was fine, but you got to keep moving, and whenever I get into this back and forth, it's always poor. There's no need to do that. You don't really achieve anything. So, <laughs> right after I made the video talking about, hey, things have, I keep things moving, we're going from one product to the next, I get caught boggled down in that quag quagmire, which is exactly what not to do. So, don't follow my example on that yesterday. Um, stand by, we'll come back. So, anyway, one of the things that uh, I said yesterday in that live video is, it's difficult to be critical in any way, even if it's not intended to be personal, of of uh, any of these artisans these days, because it's almost got to worship level, where they have, you know, some people love the product and the person so much that anybody who makes a critique of any kind is immediately the enemy and people jump out. People, um, you know, go on the attack. And uh, one of the things I had mentioned was some of the artisans had shared their, uh, get a little water in there, shared their thoughts with me on it on the Big Shave West, and they sort of considered a trade show. Um, they write it off on their taxes, and it's business, you know. However, um, it was certainly for the shavers as well, I, I understand that. But anyway, the point I'm making here is, if you're critical of, uh, or make a critique, or don't like something that's popular, the uh, zealots will immediately mobilize, and that happens. And so the artisans, um, Someone had asked, why are you the spokesman for these artisans? Why can't they say it themselves? The way, the reason they can't say it themselves is they get killed if they do. They're like, oh, they're, you know, so they'll t they tell me things and I don't mention their name and I, you know, I sort of put forward that message. I'm not their spokesman, but since I don't really have anything in it monetarily, I can say it, but they can't say it because they get killed, you know, and I got some heat yesterday, but it's not heat that they can tolerate because... Um, they run a business, and you know they may be less popular than some of the others, and have a different viewpoint. And when you have that, they're going to be very reluctant to buck, you know, uh, or see like seem like they're cutting against the grain, so to speak. And so, anyway, um, yeah, that was a mistake. It's better just to say nothing and let it go. Um, that's my advice to you. I have done far better since I've been back at. Um, not responding and just moving on, but yesterday, 
I did respond because I felt like it was taken out of context and it would probably be better just not to say anything at all and move on and just let it go. Um, because when you get in the back and forth, there's rarely anything achieved. So that's just my personal message. As just keep it moving. Say what you got to say and keep it moving if you possibly can. I realize it's difficult when things get, when uh, people get things wrong or sometimes when they're flat, just not telling the truth. Um, um, so, you know, just be careful and uh, try to keep it moving. And, you know, I hope we're not at the point where you can't say anything remotely critical. And sometimes that's the case with certain uh, artisans because people just go nuts. And uh, we need to be having an open mind because we buy this stuff. You know, this is not a charity. Like I said yesterday, we're buying this stuff, guys. So we have uh, every right to, to make it okay. just the same as uh, customers of mine, if they don't get the service they like, they will make their feelings known. You know, so we have the right to do this. I did get a weeper there, but I'm most certainly, or I, I, I nick myself, but that's probably me not being accustomed to the razor. I must say, um, back on the razor, we'll get, get off that last subject. Um, I think it's been done a pretty good job um, overall. Pretty comfortable. Um, I love the Atlas handle on it. I think that's Fantastic. I think this is a great configuration with the Atlas. I don't know how it comes, but it's done a great job with the Atlas. All right, let's uh, rinse the face. We'll come back and do the post. Stay tuned. All right, and in comes Alan, because I did get a, a weeper there on that side. But let's just, I'll run it over to see if there's any sort of hot spots. And when you use an alum stick, if you've had a rough shave, you can sort of run it around, see if you feel any burning. And I just got myself right there somehow, probably not using the right angle or careless or maybe there was a bump I don't know I don't usually do that but overall I must say um, no burning anywhere else so that feels pretty good um, overall this was a good shaper um, nice I, I really like it in this configuration with the Atlas handle I don't know whether I'll buy it personally uh, or not but it's a good shaver uh, that I can tell you so um, Hope that it's helpful, and thank you, Stan, for letting me try it. I'll probably use it again before I send it back, at least one time. And uh, now, the magic comes in. There's Witch Hazel. And we will uh, use this on the face. And Warhawk, uh, if you're watching, I'm not going to use this on my head. And the reason why is the angle has to be kept so flat. That's going to be difficult for me to go around the contours. I don't have enough experience, really, to... To do well with it on my head so there's no sense in butchering my head I have a dinner engagement this evening so i don't want to go out there looking like i've been in battle so i'm not going to use it on my head today but i will do a head shaving video all right quick review uh, the ariana and evans is beautiful stuff a beautiful scent really really nice we're going to use the aftershave in a moment again above the tie g1 which i assume means gym style it did a good job and once again uh, if you watched the video yesterday, you don't have to take this completely apart to all four pieces to put in the blade. You can loosen it up, take the top cap off, slap the blade in, crank it back down. Uh, it did a good job shaving, no problems at all with it. We had the Edwin Jagger uh, synthetic brush and uh, everything was great. Now let's move on to the Ariana and Evans Monte Carlo aftershave. Monte Carlo is the scent, by the way. It's really nice cologne scent. And we will uh, uh, use a little of this guy and see how we do with it. I still sp in the habit of spraying it in my hands anyway, even though it's got a, you know, I guess I could do it that way, but I'm not used to doing it that way, so I don't. Now let's let's try a little more for the heck of it. Feels nice. Very nice packaging on this uh, Ariana and Evans. Uh, branding. I like the black and white. It's simple but effective and uh, I really like this uh, packaging on the uh, I'm going to wipe this down so, so you can see it better. It had a little water on it. really like the packaging here too. That's very very nice. So thank you Pete Charcalis. I will continue to buy Ariana and Evans because I really enjoyed it and thank you folks for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time let's help make the entire world shape great once again.